Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Um, as you know, uh, the administration's plan to end the Title 42 expulsion authority. Um, and, and again, I'm a big believer in Title 8 instead of Title 42, even though I support Title 42. And there are three things that the administration is doing. They did an agreement with Panama and Colombia, uh, number one. Number two, they got the, uh, the asylum officers. They're going to do some expedited work with Border Patrol. Uh, facilities and number three there's a rule that should come out before uh, May 11th that basically says that if people don't come in if they come in between ports of entry they'll be returned and they have to come in through a port and do it you know provide an incentive to do it the legal way and not the uh, uh, not in between ports and since I represent a lot of, of uh, uh, border area that's important to me that people are not crossing our our, our lands uh, number one, uh, now, I want to see what ICE is doing to do this because I'm concerned about a couple of things. Big picture. Uh, according to Secretary Fudge's statement on, uh, that she provided just recently, she says that there are a shortage of almost 7 million affordable housing units. Uh, and for every 100 extremely low-income renter, there are only 33 rental rentals available. So I want to put that... Uh, um, outline out there. Now, looking at the top 10 parole notice to report appointments <coughs> for backlog locations as April as of April 7, 2023, and as you know, there's the NTR, which is a notice to report to ICE, and then traditionally we've used the NTA, notice to appear before an immigration judge. So the notice to report is a step in between they go before they go to an immigration judge. So if you can work with me on this time period, the top 10 uh, backlog locations, New York, number one, uh, mostly booked through March of 2033, 2033. Uh, they got about 32,000 plus there. San Antonio, I was surprised about San Antonio, but uh, it's number two, uh, booked uh, up, through March 2023, uh, Midamar, Florida, Los Angeles, it goes in Jacksonville, Milwaukee, Chicago, Washington, Denver, and then Mount Laurel, Laurel in New Jersey is, uh, rounds up the top. So it goes from 2033 to 20, uh, March of 2027. So they go to ICE and report. Let's <coughs> take New York. Uh, they'll report up to March of 2033. Then they get a notice to appear, an NTA, notice to appear, and then that's another two, three years before they can go up to a judge. So if we take 2023, 2033, should I say, 2033, uh, add another two, three years, we're talking about 2035 or 2036. So keep in mind, the affordable housing units, I mean, they got to live somewhere. Uh, and, and I'm concerned about what's happening here. So my question is, what is ICE doing to expedite uh, some of the work? Are we looking at um, uh, detention, as the chairman mentioned? Are we looking at more additional removal flights for the ones that uh, should be removed. Uh, uh, what are we looking at? Do you have enough resources to fund to execute these strategies? Because again, it's a little concerning that some of them have to wait to 2033 just to appear before you, and then they have to get another two, three years before they even go to an immigration judge to get either a, a stay to, I mean, uh, either they stay or, or they're, they get a final deportation orders. And I think we have over a million final deportation orders are still pending on that. So start off with my concern is for the folks that live here in the U.S., there's not enough housing, but then we're adding all this extra folks coming in. No, good, good question. Um, I, I think there's a number of efforts that are underway that's going to help us uh, issue NTAs in places like New York much sooner. Um, there are some technology solutions that are in, in the works that is going to allow us to um, issue NTAs virtually 
uh, there, there, there is some a request to the Hill to give us the authority that we could actually serve it virtually and have people agree to accept their documents electronically. So that is certainly something that we are continue to work with the Congress to, to sort of get the authority for. But we are working on the technological uh, piece of it so that we can do these telephonic interviews or virtual interviews and, and have individuals not have to wait 10 years to have their charging documents issued. Um, there's also the online change of address uh, form or technology solution that's, that we're working on, which will allow individuals to opt in to receiving mail out NTAs. And we think that that too will, will certainly help uh, eliminate the backlog. CBP is also, uh, you know, given the, the large number of people that individuals that we've released, they're also beefing up their staff to help ICE tackle this backlog. So with them joining the fight and, you know, if we get the additional resources in FY24 that were slated for like 145 ERAs, additional 45 um, ICE officers that are going to be assigned to the non-detained docket, we believe this additional staffing will go a long way and help more quickly eliminating the, the, the NTA backlog. Thank you, Mr. 